Good morning, good morning, good morning. Ten minutes ago, we had blazing sun, blazing sun. So I got myself organized to come outside and clean up the yard because I want to cut the grass tomorrow. And um, I was like, yeah, we're getting some sun today. And look, the weather setting up. But I'm already here. So <laughs> let's go see what we could do. How are you going this morning? All you good? All you doing, what's all you need to be doing for all yourself? Taking good care of yourselves, praying, eating, calming yourself, treating yourself right. All right, drop some comments, let me know what are some of the things that you all do to take care of yourselves. Self care is important. All right, so I'll tell all you something about me. I love to cut grass. I love to cut my own grass. A lot of people comment um, in the past when they see me cutting the grass. Oh, how Sana ha he wife cutting grass, but they don't know that I does actually buff up Sana when he pick up the waka to cut the grass because I love that, you know? So when I see my boy Sana picking up the waka to cut grass, I just feel like he's taking away something important from Anna. You know what I mean? So I just clean the air on that. I just try to be real strategic when I clean in the yard, right? So I will walk through and clean up the yard so that when I start that walk and I start to give it throttle, I don't really have much stopping to bend down and pick up this and pick up that because I think that is counterproductive sometimes. Things like these. <laughs> Arts and craft. Last night this was on my dining room table. This morning, it's out on the ground here. It's just going to be a nice mellow day cleaning. Girls are never have their chores waiting for them to, you know. They ain't get away today. All right, so you'll see my feeding table here. I have to put some seeds, but I've been getting some success. One of the key things that you have to remember when putting out food for the birds is that you have to be consistent. You have to put things every day for them, you know? Okay, so let me show you what's going on. You see that? What's that? That is Shadow Benny. Yeah? Shadow Benny here too. Shadow Benny there. A good patch here. A good patch there. And the outside of the fence. Yeah, some long leaves growing. Alright. What I will do is I will walk through. Pick all the Shadow Benny. You'll be surprised as to how much shadow bunny I'm going to get out of this yard. I think it's just a waste to have so much a nice shadow bunny growing in the yard and cut it all down in the back. No, if it was Sana, Sana chop down everything, eh? Sana would not go and take your time and pick no shadow bunny. But then he would have chopped it down and then he would have said, Ellis, we have had a shadow bunny in the fridge, girl. So we'll start from the north side, picking shadow bunny and head down to the south. first pick one of the advantages of not cutting your grass very often in Cora is that your shadow benny will flourish see this fellow here there's a navel orange tree I get this as a plant um, from my uncle Papoy down in Erin When I got it, it was like this high. And look how big it has grown. All right, he actually grafted this himself. So when I cut the grass, what I will usually do is rake up the cuttings and create a mound around the base of the plant. Once your name is Shadow Benny, I will find you. They thought they got away. But they don't know what Shadow Benny looks like. I kind of forget. It grow? Yes. This is what Shadow Benny looks like. Bye, they look so. Oh. Are you okay? They look so really scary. So they look like a shadow. <laughs> yeah. Shadow Benny leaves longer than Suri face, yes? <laughs> Can I put it? Yeah, put it for me. Oh. Oh. Let me see. 
There you go. Thank you. Yeah. You see in lime to pick? Yep. Careful. <laughs> Look, Mama. Look. Hey, yeah. Let me say yeah. Come here, look. Woo, it fall down. Yep. Take your time. That's how she has big limes. Yeah, we trimming this, we trimming this lime tree. Oh, well, I think you remember that. Trimming this lime tree today too. Wow, there's a lot of here. See? Woo! What is that? It's called a duck and moon flower. Oh yeah. Pretty. Watch these. Uh -huh. They look like a duck with a beak looking at a moon. One big basin of bandania. Crush it up a little bit. Smell it. Mm. I smell that and I immediately taste chow and choka and curry. Bandania in the day and bandania in the night. Once you put bandania, you're cooking it right. Bandania in the choker, bandania in the rice. Bandania in the mobi, bandania in the ice. Wow, all you feel on this sound, I can sing shot. Daddy? No. Mommy? I'm really embarrassed to show them a cutlass. It's rusty, it needs sharpening. It's Mommy, been a while. The first thing I should have do is move the school, you know. You know what? I might just drill some holes at the bottom. I'll just fill it with some dirt and manure and plant in it because I don't think that is too fit to put things to drink and such. Alright. Okay, way boy. Die real coconuts to pick up because it have here and it have there. All right, okay. One. And always be aware when you're cleaning your yard. Things like sense, a pea and scorpion and thing. Okay. Just want to make this area a little clearer for the kids. So I'll trim off those branches and parts of the coconut branch as far as I can reach now. I can't reach all the way to the top. Alright. Always when you're cutting branches and thing. Check the underside because you want to make sure it has no jet waiting for you now, boy. If I was now talking to all about Jeff, look at what fall out from the branch. There's a jet nest. But. Oh, yes, it's a jet. Ah! The branches are biodegradable, so I'll just take them across the road. Man waiting right by the entrance there for me, you know. Think like he is probably a guard. The bouncer there right by the entrance. Just trim off. Trim off these dry branches. But well, figure looking much better, man. Also clean this little fella here. This is a um chili mango tree. See it's sending out some sending out some new foliage there. Yep. I'm gonna give it a little fertilizer. This is an avocado tree. Yes. Say zabuka. Huh? This is a Abuka. Watch me now. Say Abuka. 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 
Yeah, no baby, those are not kobos. So I have my trusty lava. Lava? Lava. Lava? Yeah. I had to cut down this fella because he was blocking the sunlight from reaching my lime tree. So you see it's starting to take shape. I like to have this area clear because that's where my kids will be playing. So you see how much clearer it's looking, right? And I'm gonna show you. It'll just make it easier to pick up the coconuts underneath the tree now. I wouldn't be butting my head on the overhanging branches. So it's just to pick up these branches, pick up the coconuts. I'm looking good. I'm not sure yet. All of that, that whole big heap is to throw away. See? Now the fun with the coconuts begins. All of that. There's an uphill climb. Right? The coconuts on them here. I was slight inclined to go up and put it on that long table over there. From point A to point B. I could do it, man. These were some that had fallen a few months ago. And as you can see, they've germinated. I don't know if I have any place to plant them boy because you see coconut trees tend to get very big and I don't want them to block the sunlight too much oh, you know coconut trees just get very tall right and I don't want them to block the sunlight because I have intentions of starting back up my kitchen garden in full force I used to have real things, you know. Pak choy, pimento, hot pepper, lettuce, kale, vegan, sweet pepper, tomatoes, same body, pumpkin. I had all them things. Pumpkin is not just pumpkin, you know. Pumpkin is punking because the price is steep, real high. I eat pumpkin and drips now. I drop one drop of pumpkin to one piece of sada. So I have this old lawnmower bag. We use it as a carrying, a toting vessel for the coconuts. Let's see if I could do this with one hand to show you the situation. Now, it's coconuts. We in the northern range. Be very careful. Yep, water one. All right, let me have it. Oh gosh, it's heavy. So I could only lift eight at a time. That's as much as my strength would allow me to carry. Remember, it's uphill. Let me see, let me see. Ellis, you can do it. Oi. This man bring coffee for me. I ain't seen it much this morning, what? I ain't feeling too good. Mr. San, I ain't feeling so good. Yeah. What I don't know. I just ain't feeling too correct. Why ain't come outside and sit down? I'm uh, frying two eggs there. Okay. Do you want egg? Nah, good, thanks. Uh, it's good. I was tasty. Bye. 
I get fed up to in coconut. So I start to pelt them up on the ground. And them girls help them up put them on something. I want to do that help here. You giving mommy trouble. But I want to listen to you. You want to listen to me? Yeah. I want to ask you something. Mm -hmm. Why you pick up the Japanese with your hand? Eh? Why you holy Japanese? So it goes like this. And to make sure it's safe. Mm-hmm. Girls watch it from there. Going on. Demonstrate. <laughs> so you hold it like this. You give it a backhand swing. Right? You give it a backhand swing. Tighten your core. And true. <laughs> So many coconuts. And look, one more coconut day. And the next coconut day. Hi, yeah, my papa. Oh, they believe all that work at all. You see, they take my three hours because I take my time. It was plenty work. So watch, watch what is take place in Cora. Cora. Blue skies, white clouds. And on this side, the clouds started to get very dark. Who's uh, 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 singing so nice? Uh, Who's singing so nice? Yes. Way, she's a real nice singing child boy. On this side, it doesn't really call for anything extensive. You see, it's just to cut off some dead leaves on this side. I don't think I need to trim the lantanas. And I don't trim my Jacob's coat because you see these tiny purple flowers the hummingbirds love these and the rain is coming see the hummingbirds love the Antigua heat This fella going to town. Boy, that rain, that rain coming down, boy. So I had an inside, and it's probably a good thing because I know just now the kids will be hungry. So I'm gonna head inside, take a little clean up, scrub my hands, get all under the fingernails clean and stuff now, you know, because there was a lot of things I did outside. All right, don't go anywhere, you know. I'm going to make a repas. Hello, welcome for food. Yeah, boys, I'm beat up and thing, and I'm gonna start doing the arepas. Now, what are arepas? Arepas are made of cornmeal mainly originating from the south american countries such as venezuela and colombia very very popular in venezuela the first time i had an arepa it was from a born and bred venezuelan woman when i took that first bite i was like you know now long ago they would have pounded the corn grains and soaked them and made the arepas but we have an easier way we have cornmeal all right I choose to use this Promasa because it's very fine. And this type, this brand is actually like a, like a flower, all right? What are some of the fillings that you could put in your arepas? Basically anything that comes to mind, you can put in your arepas. Arepas are basically like the equivalent to roti or cricks, vegetables, Tuna. I know the South Americans, they love to put meat, uh, beef, 
plantains in it. Today I'm just doing a little tuna. A tuna and cheese mixture. Quite simple, very delicious. Now traditionally all you need is corn flour, salt and water. But, and I hope they'll forgive me for this. I just add a couple more ingredients, nothing too fancy. Just to change it up a bit to so two and a half cups of corn flour. About a teaspoon of salt. You could add more or less if you choose. A half teaspoon of baking powder and a teaspoon of sugar. Now you mix everything properly. Everything needs to be evenly incorporated into the entire mixture. Alright, now you add water. Now let me tell you something about this. This is cornmeal and it's been dehydrated. Alright, so what we're going to be doing here is rehydrating the granules. These granules are going to absorb a lot of water and this is what we want to happen because when we put this into the pot and it starts to cook, the heat is actually going to help the water that's absorbed in the granules to steam and plump up nice so that on the inside of the arepa is going to be nice and soft and on the outside is going to be crunchy. Now some people do it the other way around. Eh? Some people add water first and then they pour in the, um, the corn flour after. So you see quickly what is happening here. Don't waste any time. Add water and just mix and get in there. Squish it. Have some fun. You're going back to primary school days. With plasticine, yeah, squish them up. And what you're trying to do is get all the dry ingredients mixed in with the water, all right? As well as the, well, the squishing motion like this is going to make sure there are no lumps. My fingertips doing all the feeling for me and I'm just feeling one or two little lumps again. I'll just work it, work it, work it. And the longer it sits, the more it's going to firm up. Because right now that corn flour is still absorbing all that water. Alright, so you see this is the consistency that I've been looking for. It's not too stiff. You could work it nicely. And it still holds its shape. Alright. Just going to leave this to rest a couple minutes while my pot heats up. And Sydney, Sydney, my artist, my artist did a little drawing. She did a little drawing. Hey, hey. And here now, I nearly eat one of that corn, you know, that corn look real on that paper. <laughs> well done, baby. Thank you. Pro Massa. Because when you use this, you could be a pro or a master in making a reaper. Ha ha ha. Still joke at the See? Yes, man. I could shape this in a ball, in a square, in a cube, in a heart. And it will hold its shape. Now I have a multi purpose talcary pot. Well, today is going to be cooking a reapers. Any fowl in the back? You know what you're saying? Cook the arepa. You hear what you say it again? Cook the arepa. And if you look sharp, you go end up in this pot too, you know. The side of the arepa is going to be nice and soft, and on the outside is going to be curl. My artist did a little drawing. She so how you just know when your pot hot? Apart from Feel the temperature on top. Other than doing this, you just smell it. So let's start making our reapers. Okay. First thing I'll do is just take um, a little oil and kind of coat the pot liberally, eh? Liberally. You take like about this size, enough to fit 
comfortably in the palm of your hand like that when you cup it. All right, get, you can make it as small or as big as you like, and you just roll, roll, roll like that. You see, perfect, perfect shape. Take this. down there and repeat several times <laughs> smells good yes like popcorn kind of like kind of like popcorn a little hand keep some corn meal so you see how easy the dough is to work with it's not too soft and it's not too firm it's perfect this is the situation that's happening here all right that's my heat direct heat and what is also going to work for us in this situation is a little bit of indirect heat all right we create some sort of like a oven effect and what this is going to do is going to help encourage the steam have a little help in the back there all right so how long am i going to cook these arepas for about six to seven minutes per side how will I know when these arepas are fully cooked? We're gonna use our hands to tap them gently or the back of a spoon and you're gonna hear a hollow sound. It's almost like the sound is reverberating on the inside of the arepa. Let me check and see what's going on. Let me see if we could flip. And you see once it moves like that very easily, well, you know you're halfway get through. Ah, boy. Yes, man. Perfect. Perfection. You see once they start to move just like that on their own? Yeah. No stick and peek in place. Mm -hmm. Lovely. So we'll just cover them again and give them six minutes. I have our next batch after this one is finished. Six minutes have passed. Let me see. We hit the tallil. You hear that? I'm gonna hit it with a spoon. Yeah, man. Okay. So that we prime up the pot for the second batch. Nice. I drained two tins of tuna. To that, I have three ounces of cheese grated, two cloves of garlic grated, three pimentos grated, two tablespoons of onion grated, and some shadow benny. And you know what? Just put everything inside here. And about two tablespoons of mayonnaise. Mayonnaise now. And mix them up real good. And there you have your tuna mixture to go inside your arepas. Now while our second set making, I will I'll prepare for the gills because they're real hungry. So just stick your knife in there. You want to avoid like a sewing motion like that because Get pull out some money filling and watch. Oh, you see that steam? Please tell me all you see that steam coming out. Yes. Wow. Oh yeah. For whoever wants a little something extra in their filling, huh? You know? So we put in some tuna filling inside there. Yeah? A little bit of pureed salad. 
<laughs> Some thinly sliced tomatoes. Thinly sliced cucumbers. A little red onion. Looks purple though. And a little sprinkle of scallion. Yeah. That is your reaper right there, man. I call Mr. Sana. Mm. How can we cancel? Mm. Mm. <laughs> no, my guy, my man, I'm serious. It's soft and tender, boy. On the inside? Yeah. But again, I crunch on the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Me like this. <laughs> mucho. 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 <laughs> Sing a song now. You make me feel dozing. Ba la ba la ba ba ba. Hey. <laughs> they so lost in the taste that they didn't realize. I took a bite from one of the arepas and ninja it. Yes, I did, ninja. All right, so that recipe that I gave you gave me 13 comfortable arepas. So of course, based on that, you could. Double the recipe, triple, purple, triple if need be. Or you could simply cut it in half. If you happen to mix too much mixture and you just find like the arepas multiplying in your pot, that's okay. The mixture could stay well in the fridge for up to two days. Just cover it in an airtight container, put it in the fridge, don't forget it. And before you make your arepas, you pull it out about 10 to 15 minutes before, just to come up the temperature and cook so this is my fully assembled arepa all right so i did one with the tuna and the vegetables and one with some guava jam yep Well, you know, mummies is be the last one to fix the plate, right? You're going in with the tuna first. Ah! It's that good. How it is with the guava? This child glittering with your beard and glitter. <laughs> Taking a bite of the guava. Yeah, boy. That's a nice dessert. I'm telling you, arepas are so versatile. All you need to go and get some pro massa. Make this. Comment and tell me how it come out. Thank you so much for spending the day with me in the yard and in the kitchen. You know, I said in love to everybody. I love all our oil here. From the bottom of my heart, always a pleasure to be with you. Until next time, be happy, be safe.